great-grandparents' house in West Virginia had a reputation for being eerie. Strange things seemed to happen there, especially after dark. The unsettling stories centered around my dad's brother, Bill. As a teenager, Bill met a tragic end right in front of the house. He had been out with his friends, indulging in a bottle of whiskey they found in his dad's tool shed. Drunk and reckless, Bill took a dare to dash across the street in front of a coal truck. It was a dare he didn't survive. Despite the passing years, the memory of Bill lingered in the house, especially in his old bedroom. When we visited, I always ended up sleeping in that room. It felt frozen in time, untouched since the day Bill died some 20 years ago. His clothes still hung in the closet, posters of planes adorned the walls, and his books and albums remained stacked on the floor, a silent testament to a life cut short. Spending the night in Bill's room was always an unsettling experience. The wooden floors creaked with each step, and strange noises echoed through the house. One night, as I lay in bed, I could hear footsteps pacing on the old floorboards and the clanging of dishes in the kitchen. It seemed to go on for hours, filling me with an uneasy dread. Finally, unable to bear it any longer, I mustered the courage to get out of bed and turn on the overhead light. The sudden brightness pierced the darkness, but the noises ceased as if by magic. Peering out into the moonlit dining room and kitchen, I saw no one. With a sense of relief tinged with unease, I locked the door and returned to bed, leaving the light on until sleep finally claimed me. The next morning, I joined my dad and grandmother at the dining room table, still haunted by the events of the night before. When my grandmother asked if I had managed to get any sleep, I recounted the strange occurrences from the night before, mentioning the sounds of someone washing dishes. To my surprise, both my dad and grandmother chuckled knowingly. Oh, that's just Bill, my grandmother explained nonchalantly. He sometimes likes to rummage through the kitchen. You just have to tell him to shoo and he'll stop. As the years passed, our annual visits to West Virginia became synonymous with eerie encounters in my grandparents' house. Each time I was old enough to stay in a room by myself, I found myself confronted with inexplicable phenomena. One particularly chilling incident occurred a couple of years later. Without turning on the light, I could sense a presence moving through the house, its footsteps echoing on the creaky floorboards. I stood in the darkness of the dining room, feeling a sudden chill in the air and catching the faint scent of flowers like carnations. My senses heightened. I heard footsteps approaching the back porch, followed by the sound of the screen door opening and banging shut. Instinctively, I retreated to the safety of Bill's room, where I found an unexpected addition, a vinyl album by the Little River Band resting on the dresser. It hadn't been there before, and its presence sent a shiver down my spine. The following morning, I recounted the night's events to my grandmother, who simply shrugged and remarked, Bill was just in the mood for some music. It was a casual acceptance of the inexplicable, a recognition that the spirit of Bill continued to linger in the house long after his passing. Despite the familiarity of these eerie occurrences, my last visit to my grandparents' house marked the end of an era. I had grown old enough to stay home alone, and I refused to return. The passage of time eventually caught up with my grandparents, who passed away in the 90s, leaving behind their haunted house. In 2007, the house was finally torn down, bringing an end to its legacy of ghostly encounters. For some, the notion of Bill haunting the house was a comforting presence, a reminder of loved ones lost. But for me, the eerie atmosphere and unexplained phenomena were enough to keep me away. I couldn't shake the feeling that if a ghost could make dishes clang together, it could do something far more sinister the house itself added to the unease with its dark wood panelling, low ceilings and perpetual smell of smoke lingering in the air. And then there were the peculiar pocket doors sliding silently into the walls, 
a strange quirk of my grandfather's design that only added to the house's otherworldly aura. Before we jump into our second story, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content. Stay tuned for more updates. I lived in my grandparents' house for many years while my mother sorted out her life. The house was quite large, with 13 bedrooms spread over two stories, and it had a full basement and a finished attic. It was an old farmhouse that my great-grandfather had constructed, and both he and my great-grandmother had passed away there long before. Despite never encountering anything malevolent, there were numerous instances of unexplainable occurrences. Objects would often go missing for days, only to reappear in the same place they were originally put. My grandparents and I experienced this on many occasions throughout the years. It happened in various rooms, but it seemed more frequent around the kitchen table, despite us never actually dining there. Like most surfaces in the house, it served as a catch-all for miscellaneous items. My grandmother, whom one might describe today as a hoarder, saved everything, just in case it was needed again. The entire house was filled with boxes and paper bags of stuff in every unused room. I mention her hoarding tendencies to emphasize that my grandparents were not overly tidy, and they too were perplexed by the disappearing items. Interestingly, it seemed to occur only with objects that were not in their designated storage places. Perhaps that's why I still habitually place my keys, wallet, and other belongings in the same spot to this day. Another peculiar happening was the washing machine running in the middle of the night. I cannot recall how many times I was awakened by the sound of the washing machine starting up on its own. The washer and dryer were situated in the kitchen, near the base of the stairs leading to my bedroom, which was the first room at the top of the stairs. No one was ever awake when the machine started, and I don't remember it ever completing a cycle by itself. My grandmother and I discussed it several times, but neither of us could determine the cause. I often heard footsteps at night. The house was old, with hardwood floors that creaked with every step. The hallway running down the center of the second floor was especially noisy. No matter how cautiously you tread, it was impossible to traverse that hallway without making a sound. Many nights, I awoke to the familiar creaking, Occasionally, I mustered the courage to crack open my bedroom door, only to find the hallway deserted. Fear was a constant companion. I grew up with an ever-present sense of dread. I avoided entering dark rooms, instead opting to cautiously extend my hand to switch on the light from outside. Looking back, I realized the irrationality of my behavior, as anything lurking in the darkness could have easily seized my hand and pulled me inside. However, as a child, my mind worked differently. I never ventured into the attic at night, and I steered clear of the basement after dark, despite its lack of windows. There was a palpable difference between the atmosphere during the day and at night, even though I felt perfectly at ease in the basement during daylight hours. These eerie experiences were not exclusive to me. My grandparents had encountered similar phenomena, as had my mother, who grew up in the house. She shared many of the same experiences I witnessed. Interestingly, she refrained from discussing them until I broached the subject with her. Her encounters went beyond mine, recalling numerous instances where an unseen presence would enter her room and sit on the bed adjacent to hers. She described hearing floorboards creak, footsteps, witnessing her door open wider than usual, and sensing footsteps approaching her bed, resulting in a depression forming on the mattress. At that point, she would scream, prompting the bed to return to its original state, the footsteps to retreat, and the door to close to its usual position. She never disclosed the frequency of these occurrences, but it clearly left a lasting impression on her. I attribute my fear to the way a child's mind processes such events. Throughout my years in that house, I never encountered anything remotely harmful. In my opinion, my great-grandparents remained in the house after their passing, watching over us. 
Perhaps they enjoyed playing harmless pranks or were simply intrigued by modern appliances like the washing machine. I cannot say for certain, but growing up with an open mind to phenomena beyond the norm set me apart from many of my peers. In many ways, I miss that house. It has since been repurposed into an office building and I now reside on the other side of the world. The thought of revisiting the place evokes nostalgia, yet I fear it has likely been cleansed of any lingering presence now that my family no longer has any physical ties to it. When I was around 10 years old, I used to spend a lot of nights at my grandmother's apartment. She was blind and my uncle had poor vision, so they needed some help around the house. I didn't mind staying over. It was like a little adventure for me. That particular night, things took a spooky turn. Usually I'd sleep in my grandmother's room, but she thought I was getting too old for that. So I ended up on the couch in the living room. As I lay there trying to drift off to sleep, I heard something that made my blood run cold. A voice, low and whispering, called out my name. Timmy, come here, I won't hurt you. It sounded so close, yet I couldn't see anyone. Was it real or just my imagination playing tricks on me? Terrified, I ran to my grandmother's room to seek comfort, but she reassured me it was just a bad dream. However, I knew deep down it wasn't a dream. No one else was awake. I could see because the hallway light was on. Besides, my uncle wouldn't pull a prank like that. I returned to the couch but sleep eluded me. I hid under the covers until I heard the voice again calling my name. This time, I summoned the courage to investigate. I crept into the kitchen where the voice seemed to be coming from. It led me to the storage room, a cramped space filled with canned vegetables and other household items. Despite my fear, I couldn't resist the urge to find out who or what was behind the whispering. Standing at the entrance to the storage room, I felt a chill run down my spine. Sweat dripped down my face from being under the blankets for so long. I listened as the voice whispered my name again, its words barely audible through the plastic accordion-like door. Terrified and trembling, I rushed back to my grandmother's room and woke up my uncle. After much persuasion, my grandmother reluctantly agreed to check the storage room. To my relief, she found it empty, except for the things she had stored there. The door was securely locked with a chain and deadbolt, ruling out any possibility of an intruder. Even though I'm now 46 years old, I can still vividly recall that spine-chilling night. It's etched into my memory like it happened yesterday, and while nothing like that ever occurred again, the memory still sends shivers down my spine. When I was around 12 years old, I lived in a small two-bedroom house with my parents and two sisters. One summer night stands out vividly in my memory. My mom was in the kitchen boiling a chicken while we waited for my dad to come home from work. It was a typical evening, nothing out of the ordinary. I went to bed around 10 p.m. with my sisters. We shared a room, so it was cozy having them nearby. But as the night wore on, I started feeling increasingly uneasy. I tossed and turned, unable to shake off a sense of nausea that seemed to grip me from within. Sometime in the middle of the night, I awoke suddenly, my heart racing. I tried to calm myself and rolled over to my right side to go back to sleep. That's when things took a strange turn. In what I desperately hoped was a dream, I found myself wide awake, lying on my left side and facing my sister's bed in the middle of the room. The bedroom door was closed, but to my horror, I saw something materialize through the closed door right before my eyes. It was a small figure, unlike anything I had ever seen before. Its skin was pale and translucent, and it had long, skinny arms that seemed to stretch unnaturally. I couldn't tell if it was some kind of dwarf or an alien, but whatever it was, it filled me with a sense of dread. The creature climbed onto my sister's bed and perched itself on her chest. 
I felt a surge of panic welling up inside me as I watched helplessly. In my dream, I screamed at the creature to leave my sister alone, but it paid me no heed. Then, to my horror, the creature turned its gaze towards me and reached out, grabbing my right wrist with a cold, clammy hand. Its voice echoed in my mind, chilling me to the bone as it warned, wake up if you don't want to die. With a jolt, I woke up, gasping for breath, my heart pounding in my chest. I screamed, unable to shake off the lingering terror of the nightmare. I stumbled out of bed and ran to the bedroom door, desperate to escape the horror that seemed to be closing in on me. But when I flung open the door, I was met with a sight even more terrifying than the nightmare itself. The house was engulfed in thick black smoke, billowing out from the kitchen where my mom had been boiling the chicken. Panic set in as I realized the danger we were in. I screamed for my parents, frantically waking them up. My dad sprang into action, getting us all outside to safety. Tears streamed down my face as I recounted the nightmare to my parents, the memory still fresh in my mind. It's been years since that night, but I still remember it as if it happened yesterday. The image of the strange creature, its warning echoing in my mind, is etched into my memory, a reminder of the night we narrowly escaped disaster. If you want to see more of the most frightening horror videos, check out our previous videos and subscribe to be notified of new terrifying experiences. Until we meet again, be cautious of the supernatural and be careful when navigating through dark and eerie situations.